Hello and welcome to the LDM show. And uh, just want to say thank you guys for showing up, taking your time to watch me rant and rave a little bit. You know, and uh, I want to thank everyone for their feedback on the, uh, the new way of the, uh, the show. So we're doing more of, um, I guess, what irks me and the truth about the news of, of the hidden words that pe uh, they say at the, in the news. So kind of a little dark. I got a little suntan thing going. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> uh, so um, like I was saying, we were, we were going to talk a little bit about those stuff. So I want to break it up, I and mean, we have a good guest today that we're going to be speaking about uh, a little bit about his art gallery, which is just how I love how things go in a circle. Um, I was born and raised here in the Bronx. I left, came back, started living near, and then the studio is near where I used to um, hang out, near my, and his gallery is near the studio. So like everything just comes into play, you know, here in the Bronx, I guess. So. It makes it seem like the Bronx is like only four blocks, the way I keep meeting everybody and they are around the areas. <laughs> so, uh, but, um, ooh, my bad, sorry. I put Facebook Watch on my phone and uh, it automatically kicked in. But, uh, and let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to the little bit of word on the streets. So, um, Mama, can you bring me up? I, I want to see more of the comments than me. Up, oh, there you go. Click on the comments. Good, good. Uh, I'm, I'm, for you guys, you don't know, but I have a screen up there so I can see some of you guys' comments instead of looking on the phone all the time. But uh, let's get to this. We're in the first week of March, the first week of the non-plastic bags in the uh, supermarkets. I don't know which supermarket because my supermarket still is giving out plastic bags. <laughs> So they said they're not going to stop until it is all done. So if they brought pallets full, guess what? And they don't even charge. So um, I know I'm not going to tell you where I live. You know, I'm just narrowing it down, saying that not all supermarkets. But is it me or is it kind of ironic that New York City says they want to save the environment and save Mother Earth? So they're eliminating plastic and letting the supermarkets give you bags. Okay, so you're going to eliminate plastic and then kill trees. How is that saving Mother Earth? I'll wait. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I even put a picture up of uh, people cutting the trees down. And, uh, and I put down, so this is how New York City tries to save the world, by cutting trees. So either way, Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was like, why do I hear another voice? And I forgot. I didn't put it all the way down. But uh, why is it New York City tries to do something well, but never really thinks of it the other way? Because that, that doesn't make any sense of you getting rid of plastic bags to save the environment, but you want to kill trees. And you know... It takes almost one tree to make one freaking paper, one ream of paper. So how many trees are you cut, um, cutting up for these bags? New York, you're not really uh, thinking. True, you, you're charging five cents. Woo, whippy, yahooey. People don't really, really see it. They use like five bags. That's probably like a quarter. Now, if you would have said bags were a dollar a piece, then, you know, then... Now I know you're saving because people won't pay a dollar a piece. They'll bring their own bags. But by you saying a nickel, people are not going to bring their own bags. You know? We already have our own bags, but it's not enough to make a grocery. So we're still going to have to waste the five cents. But hey, you know, just too bad because I'm, I'm Latin. So I used to use my plastic bag for everything. We used to put the rice in there to throw it away. We, we use it as a miniature um, trash bag. <laughs> you know, on our little trash can that we have in the studio, you know, the girls use it to protect their hair from the rain. <laughs> you know, it was a multiple use plastic bag. Now it's not no more. So, but, well, there are stores that still have the plastic bags. Um, 
they didn't they did not uh stop it from every single place just the big supermarkets and stuff like that so you know and then also uh on the news is uh that I was going to talk about as well and I even forgot I just drew the blank <laughs> cuz there was so so many things on the news oh um Bloomberg has left yeah, well, my engineer was like, left? Like, dropped from the race? No, he left his neighbor's house to go to the other house. <laughs> but he's endorsing um, uh, the other guy. I even forgot his name, which I really don't really care. To me, um, Sanders, yeah, because all the politicians are a bunch of liars. They only tell the truth, or they want to make it look like they're telling the truth when they are trying to get voted in, and then after that, they just get all diva-like. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't know who to go go with, but I'm definitely going with someone besides uh, the one that we have now. You know, they say any anyone is better. I don't know. In this case, it is. But uh, just keep just keep it going. Also in the news, this is uh, again this is word on the street. So also on the news, there's a uh, gonna they trying to make a new law to um, to make people in the back seat wear their seat belts. Um, listen, government, y'all lawmakers, fix the law that is broken now. Stop worrying about what people are doing in their cars. If they don't want to save their lives, they don't want to save their lives. So what? They don't want to wear a seat belt, that's on them. It's not like if they crash and they fly out the window and they die, it's causing any other problems in the world. You know, stocks are not going down because they didn't wear their belts. You know what I'm saying? Dogs are not running around. People not killing each other just because someone didn't wear their belt. Stop worrying about the little stupid laws and fix the laws that are, are, are not really working. Because there's a lot of laws right now that have not get caught up with society in today's society, period. You know, there are uh, like... I try to stay updated with, with the penal law as well. You know, once in a while I look in the computer. And it doesn't make sense for me to even try to keep up because half of the law is still so old that it have not get caught up with today's society. So instead of you trying to make little stupid laws and worrying about what people are doing and giving cops other reasons to stop people, because that's to me what it is, um, work on the laws that are broken. Murder law. There are some of the murder laws that there's a, so many loopholes still in it because you're having to get caught up to the uh, today's technology, today's society. Bullying. Domestic violence. Well, domestic violence, I can say, is going to be hard because the name of the paper is as worthless as the ink that it was written on. And that's a um, PFA papers, you know, order of protection paper. That has... That paper is as worthless as the ink that's in the paper. So they need to figure out a way how to do it in another sense. You know what I mean? Even though it's hard, I'm not going to say that's a, a, a law that you can fix right away. But other things that you can fix, just um, cyber laws and all these other stuff that we are, technology uh, is growing, these are the laws you need to get caught up with. Stop worrying about seatbelts. They don't want to. They want to uh, protect themselves. That's on them. You know what I'm saying? Now, with that said, the taxis um, and the uh, the Ubers and all that other stuff. Maybe, maybe they need to not uphold that law, but push that as a policy, because you're driving around with someone and you crash and, and something happens to them, you're liable. So that's understandable for, for passenger-type vehicles that want to take people back and forth all the time. But everybody else that just want to hang and drive, that's on them. You know what I'm saying? You know seatbelts. I can't say seatbelts save lives because then I'm partially lying, but they prevent it. Seatbelt, don't look at me like that because seatbelts do not uh, save lives 100%. They're about good 85, 90%. So if you want to be 90% surviving in something, wear your seatbelt. That's all I got to say. But it's not 100% safe. 
uh, because there are many people that crashed the car, survived, but then they uh, died because of the pressure of the seatbelts or died because of the, of the uh, airbags. So, but at least you have more percentage to survive. So it's on you. You want to wear it, you wear it. I know I'm going to wear it. I know my, my, my child in the back wear it, my wife wear it. But that's on you. It shouldn't be a law. It just, just should be, you know, common sense type of thing. Worry about the other laws. These are for the uh, government officials if they ever watch my show. Or people that know a government official, tell them that Charles sent you. <laughs> you know? So, uh, but um, what do you guys think? Should, should they worry about um, little tiny laws like that? Or should they make it a law that you have to wear your seatbelts in the back seat? You know? I don't know. Yeah. Next thing you know, they're going to say that you can't, you can't stop at a, at a spot and make out in the back seat and stuff like that. Soon, soon that's going to be a law. You know, it's my car. I brought it. I want to do what I want to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the comfort of my, my uh, facility right here. <laughs> my private. That's why I got the, the tent windows so nobody could see. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Goodness gracious. But uh, these are the laws that are, uh, are passing, passing by. They are going to, uh, they're trying to make environmental law as well for the factories, which, okay, I understand that they have to have a certain amount of carbon um, dioxide, uh, uh, you know, in the air, uh, for, especially for the companies that are using ink and stuff like that where they're fuming the places. That is understandable. You know, you can do that. Uh, and the new law that they're passing now is the uh, idle law. Um, and then it's funny how Biddy Idol is fighting for the idol <laughs> and not American Idol. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it's, that is a good law, but are the cops going to be fine for it too? It's a question I want to know because it's a law. They not above the law, right? So that means that they sitting in their car, just ch hanging out. Because I see it all the time. And their car is on. All that smoke coming out from the back of the vehicle. So are they going to get in trouble too? Can I knock on their window and take a picture and say, hey, Mayor, Mayor uh, uh, Bloomberg. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Mayor de, uh, de Blasio. <laughs> Mayor de Blasio. Uh, are you going to give this guy a ticket? You know what I'm saying? Because you keep stating that the... The police officer is not above the law. So if you make this idle law, that means they have to be turning off their car. They can't be sitting there trying to be warm. And if I can't sit there and be warm, because I'm going I'm, I'm to idle my car right in front of a cop car. If he don't get a ticket, you can't give me a ticket. Plain and simple, right? He's trying to stay warm in his car. I'm trying to stay warm in my car. If it's in the summer, I'm trying to stay cool in my car. He's trying to stay cool in his car. So what's going on? I want to know what you guys think. You know what I'm saying? What's good for the geese is good for the gander. That's how they say it. I'm just saying, I know there's a lot of people like, oh, Charles, you can't say that, man. You, you know, we're friends and I'm a police officer. Okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm, this is the LDM show and we're telling the truth. Law is a law. No one is above it, right? So they say, because the Trump guy showed that He's above it by not having witnesses and all. But anyway, <laughs> it's not a here or there. But now, you know, we're going to have some more good topics at the end of the, uh, the top of the hour of the show. But we're going to get ready to take a break and uh, bring my guest in and talk about some art galleries, some arts, why he does it, uh, these certain arts, and um, what is he trying to um, accomplish and, and bring out to the community with his art. So these questions are going to be answered right here on the LDM show when we be right back. He's got me, he's guilty of loving me in the first degree. I want to give him all I've got, I've got. <laughs>
Oh my god, there's that girl. Where? Hello, right there. And that's inside. Oh, that girl. She thinks he's all that. I first just sucked all around. I mean, just look at her. Drown your face in the grass. Doesn't she know nobody wants her here? They are her own mother wants her. She should just stay home with Dyla. Even her boyfriend has to go the other one. I would too. Hashtag loser. <laughs> The suicide of a teenage girl in British Columbia is drawing attention tonight to the issue of bullying. Before she died, she chronicled online what she'd endured. Now, as Duncan McKee reports, much of the response is also appearing online. Bullying and suicide has been a great issue on today's world. But what would happen if we were to stop what's happening and became friends with the person being bullied? Maybe the results would have been different. Let's watch this video again, but this time, let's stop this and see what happens. Oh, that girl, she thinks he's all that. I first just sucked all around. I mean, just look at her. Doesn't she know nobody wants her here? Her own mother wants her. She should just stay home with daughters. Even her boyfriend has to go the other one. I would too. Hashtag loser. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I guess so. Don't worry about them, they're nobody's anyway. Yeah, girl, they only say you to be good because they have nothing better else to do with them. Yes, girl, that is true. Yeah, I know, I just hate it when they say stuff like that, especially when it's not true. So what, they're only good? Well, it's just that, that, never mind, you guys will never understand. It's okay, we're friends now, so let's get out of here and talk about it. I don't know. Come on, it'll be okay. We can go and talk about it. Yes, girl, remember you are not alone. Well, I don't know. Okay. I don't see how it works, but I'll go. Second scene of bully, take one. And action. Doesn't she know nobody wants her here? Not even her own mother wants her. She should just stay home or die or something. Even her boyfriend left her and nothing. <laughs> As mighty armies clash in a struggle for total domination, the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. put a lot of smoke in today. Wow. But anyway, we expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LDM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to life. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. 
But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. All right, all right. Welcome back to the LVM show. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I got to put this down. They don't, they don't drink in ginger ale, but I don't need to let you know what type. It's, well, it's the fake ginger ale. It's lemon, lemony. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you guys, and uh, I want to thank Mark West for coming by and explaining a little bit about his gallery. You guys got to check that out. Um, you know, see it out. Because there's not that many art galleries around here that has to deal with the people that are around here. You know what I mean? So that's a, a, a good, good thing. But I want to talk real quick about the, uh, <laughs> the effect. Like I always tell you guys, I try to bring you out the stories, but I'm trying to give you the backstory because people don't think and they go crazy. The virus that is going around. The Budweiser virus. Corona. The Miller. No? It's not the Miller, the Budweiser. No, oh, it's the Corona. Uh, it's so funny. I seen a, a photo of the inside of a refrigerator. It says, This is what happens in the refrigerator. They have the Corona on one side of the refrigerator, and all the other drinks and food are on the other side with a, a mask on. <laughs> So these memes that are coming out are funny. But um, I put up a video. I think it was a Target or something like that. It, it was one of these big uh, department stores. People lined up outside all around each other to try to get. Costco. Uh, I don't know what it is. I just don't want to say their names. But they were, they were out there trying to get. Uh, is this on? Uh, trying to get hand sanitizers and mask and everything so i was like wait a minute so you're risking your life to be around a bunch of people that you don't know if they have that sickness or if they have the flu because it's pretty much the same thing you're going to be around them risking your life all right mark uh Thank you again, Mark. Thank you so much. Mr. Mark West is leaving the building. And again, guys, go to his gallery and uh, support, support because we need that. We need that as much as possible for the support of the community. So I definitely will see you again. And, uh, you know, wish you luck with everything, man. If anything, let us know. Thank you. You know? But again, guys, uh, they were... Thank you. Thank you again for coming. I hope you guys... They were risking their life to get these stuff for a stuff that might not even work. Say that again. They risk their lives to be around people to get stuff that might not even work. It prevents, not 100%. When I hear prevent, that means it's gonna prevent. So don't tell me by using this and using that it's gonna prevent it when it doesn't. So what prevention is 100% and stay in your house. Don't let nobody in. It's the only way you're going to get better. But uh, there are a couple cases in New York City where the mayor stated that they in their house recovering from the coronavirus. Recovering. Is there a, there's, there's a cure then? Is there a cure that I don't know of? There's no cure, right? My engineer said there's no cure. So how the mayor is saying that these people are in their house recovering from the coronavirus. So you're trying to tell me it's just a regular flu then. Listen, people, and think. No, if you're healthy, you are going to survive coronavirus. No. There is no such thing as if you're healthy, you can um, survive a, a coronavirus or a virus that is kicking people uh, so you're going to tell me all oh, thousands and thousands of people or hundreds whatever i'm you know exaggerating millions of people but all these people that have been passing away from the flu they wasn't healthy because there was bodybuilders there was health people that got the flu 
and they pass away. The coronavirus. You're going to tell me every single person was not healthy? No, a lot of them are old people. A lot of them have... Okay, uh, no matter what it is, if you're old, you're going to die from something because your immune system is not exactly, up there. Exactly, that's what they're so, saying. But that's what I'm trying to say. Think before you go crazy. To me, the media, the mayor, the government, the ma the all of these people hyped it up Rated. for one reason. And that was to bring the stocks back up. Because guess what y'all did? By y'all buying all these sanitizers, these masks, that the mask is only for a person that is coughing a lot. It's already sick, yeah. You have a flu system. Those are the ones you got to put the mask on. You don't put the mask on to try to prevent. Because you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to put the mask on to prevent. Oh, oh, I can't breathe. And then you put it back. You know those couple of seconds that you did that, you, you're already going to pretty much get it? Wash your hands. Wash your hands all the time. Wash your hands. 20 seconds. But if I remember a couple of years ago, they said that washing your hands with the sanitizer kills some of the layers of your, of your protecting skin. So now you're telling me to use it again a whole lot of times? So I got people like, hey, touched. Oh, damn. Hey, touched. Oh. I was one of those before anything that happened. I was like a germaphobic at one time when I was in college that no lie, every time I touched something, I would, or I used to like shake a person's hand scared and, and it's just because I used to hang out with these guys and I'd be seeing them, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa, you know, but just be safe. The only thing that helps is being clean and washing your hands, watching what you touch, stuff like that. So, don't go crazy and because now the stocks are back up. I mean, you said something. Yeah, I'm seeing. Uh, oh, Miss Cruz, they said there, there sure was a young and healthy people that died from the flu. Exactly. So it doesn't mean because you're not healthy you can't die. So if you have a cure, supposedly cure, then why you didn't say nothing? Because by you saying, and I'm talking to the mayor of New York. By you saying they home recovering, that means two things. One, it's not a coronavirus. It's just a flu, but you named it coronavirus so people can get more scared, so people can buy more stuff. Or, or you, have, you have a cure. So which one, so which one is it? Because there's, no, there's way no way I'm home recovering, recovering from, a from a virus that, that we don't know how, how is it spreading, spreading so much, so much or, or how, how to cure, cure it, it as you, as say. you say. Then you got, then you the, got the president talking about, about don't worry about it, the summer is all gone. How did, How did you, you know? know? You know what I'm saying? Think about it, people. Don't, don't let them brainwash you, and, and every time they say something, you're going to believe it. Uh, Anna Rose said, the fear is worse than the virus, and that is correct, because the media, the government, put all that fear and hatred, because I see many people... Um, hating towards Asian food. Seriously? Coronavirus came out. You were eating Chinese food. Did you get sick? I'll wait. Because you're the same people that are buying the half chicken and french fries. I'll wait. Shrimp fried rice. Beef fried rice. Uh, what else? What's the most popular one? Pepper steak and, and, and rice. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, that got me hungry. Yeah, exactly. That got me hungry. <laughs> I think I'm going to eat some Chinese rice. You know? So, listen. And I posted up one thing, and for the people that don't, have, that don't be on my page or anything, my personal page, but I posted up one thing. The virus came out. People went in a, on a rampage, cleaning their hands, getting masks. So they say, because I haven't seen that many people with masks, but all those masks that have been going out there. You know what I'm saying? I see one person all day today in New York, and you know New York has a lot of people with a mask on. So no one's really wearing masks. But that virus came out, but the AIDS been out for many, many, many years, and people are still not putting condoms. What's up with that? Come on. Because the media is not talk, talking about it no more. That's why you don't condom up. 
You know what I'm saying? So since the media is not talking about AIDS no more, people don't want to con them up. It's still out there. So this is what I'm saying, people. Think. Don't worry about what the media says. And when they do say something, read between the lines of what they say. Because I, I pick every little single word when a, a political person is speaking. Because they love to use these big words. Love to go left when you're trying to go right. You know? But the environmental stages of what we need to be doing together is abilities to... Listen, shut the hell up and just tell me what you're trying to say. You know what I'm saying? I asked you, was the sky blue? I didn't ask you all these other, other things. You know what I'm saying? It was a yes or no. But that's a political thing for you. So when he said recovering, it'll be uh, pretty much cured by the summer. Wash your hands. You know, like all these things are like, how do you know these things? And then you're going to try to tell us it's spreading. You know how to stop it. Just say it was the flu. So all of a sudden, coronavirus came out. Not many people were dying from the flu, though. Everybody was dying from the coronavirus. How's that? The people that, that were dying from flu said, wait a minute. <laughs> Let the coronavirus people die first. We, we, we're going to die, but I want the coronavirus people to die first. No. Come on, people. Think about it. Respect. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. I, 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 you know, I'm here to educate you as much as possible what I believe in it. But think about why are they not saying um, people died of the flu so much like they used to. Now all of a sudden people are dying of the coronavirus. That's what I keep hearing. Coronavirus is still as the same as the flu. So maybe is it the flu that they're dying from? And you guys are just saying it's a coronavirus to scare people? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's more effective if we say coronavirus because it's a new type of name and people will get off fancy and do what they need to do. I'm just saying. For two years straight, they were talking about flu. Flu kill, flu this, flu that, flu that. Clean your hands. Nobody wanted to listen, so they now they say coronavirus. No, but the statistically, they said there's still a lot of people that died in flu than corona. Statistically is what they say once in a while. But when you keep repeating one thing and one thing, it goes into the person's mind. But then she said, I, uh, I'm just confused about the mask because healthcare workers wear them. That's why I don't understand why they say it doesn't work. Because when you see a healthcare person wearing something, you automatically think it's going to work. They, if you notice, they wear that mask even when they're operating. It's not to prevent them from getting sick. It's for them preventing something to go inside your body. So think about that. They wear the mask in the operating room. So, so they for they won't contaminate the person. So why are they wearing the mask now? So they won't contaminate the person. Because that, if, if it was that case... Working in a hospital with people coming in the emergency rooms with flus and all that, they would have been wearing the mask all the time. So this is a way to show the person, hey, wear your mask. The doctors wear it, so I would have to wear it too. But if you, you go to the emergency rooms and stuff like that, you don't see the doctors wearing so much mask. You know? So if it was a bigger, big case like they say, it would be automatic. So... That's what's a little bit confusing to myself, too. Um, Anna Marie said, I'm in shock that the uh, CDC dragged it, uh, its feet to backtrack the origin of the virus. It's not that they backtrack. It's called the government. They don't do nothing until it hits. They know about it. But when it hits big is when they want to do something about it. So now they got to look what happens. And, and yeah, they drag their feet. To everything. But uh, there's no such thing as not having a cure. You can send a guy to a moon. This is, this is what I, I always say. You can send a rocket to a moon. That, can, that rocket could uphold flames and heat that no human or anybody can withstand. Come back into the orbit with heat tremendously Thousands of thousand degrees 
and not one scratch on a uh, on a spaceship. But you can't make a car that that won't dent, or a car that won't blow, or a house that when um, fire does not go to the other side at completely all. Come on, they do things when they want to or when they have to. It's about the money. The cure is not the way to go. If you notice, they always say, take this. It will hold it down. It will not cure you completely. Because they want you to keep coming back. It's the medicine. You know? But uh, we don't got that much time to go, correctly. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're about to finish. Um, so I could keep going on. But um, I, I'm glad you guys are conversating about this and um, texting about it. So I'll try to get to every single person. But again, guys, yes, hygiene. Hygiene is always the cure for everything. Good hygiene. Good hygiene, you know what I'm saying? Some, some people get uh, infections and stuff like that because they don't have that hygiene uh, when they get a cut. So they get all affected and everything. So it's always good hygiene and good uh, sense of awareness. If you're watching someone coughing and everything, and then they're going to grab something, why are you going to go right behind them and grab the same thing? Because I've seen it many times. Be aware. Yeah, you have to be aware of your surroundings. And you know, you know, that everywhere you go is a chance of you getting a germ or two. Germs float in the air for m not... 10 seconds, 5 seconds, hours. A sneeze goes 45 miles per hour and lingers for a long time. So that's why they say cough. Um, but a lot of people don't want to damage their coats. You know what I'm saying? Coughing and spitting all over their coats. And now I got to take it to the cleaners. And, you know, again, I'm spending money, you know. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't need to go outside, don't go outside. Yeah, that's what I said. The best cure or the best prevention, I mean, is stay home. Don't invite nobody to your house. There you go. You know? Live, live in the North Pole. In the North Pole. I don't even think the North... You know what? Have you ever heard of people in the North Pole that live in the North Pole dying of infections and viruses? No. Because it's too cold for them to... No, I have a friend in Canada. He said there's no coronavirus in Canada. I said they don't like cold. They, that's not, I'm, going to go, I'm going to the North Pole. Nobody dies of viruses in the North Pole. It's too cold. <laughs> Even the germs be like, heck no, I'm out. <laughs> I don't got time to go to this guy. But it is proven fact when it's cold that it kills germs because that's why hospitals keep it so cold. That's why, well, I can't say restaurants keep it cold because of that. They keep it cold for another reason. One, for the germs, and two, to hurry you up out the restaurant. <laughs> no, seriously, I learned that in business. To hurry you up to get out the restaurant so they can have another person sit down and spend more money. Instead of you talking, especially Puerto Ricans, we be eating and still stay there talking. <laughs> hey guys, well, this is the LDM show. Uh, thank you for uh, watching today and thank you guys for uh, commenting on uh, the page. Keep it up and remember the LDM radio uh, music awards are up. So if you like independent artists, check out the LDM uh, Facebook page and start voting. It's hard votes, but start voting. All right, guys, thank you and we'll be back next week. Same time, so be safe, guys.